guys, welcome back to episode, or what will be episode 7 of uh, the DIY Ultimate Camper Build. Um, I guess I, I want to start off with a couple things. One, I'm, I'm back. Uh, coronavirus, you know, did its thing. I did my re rehabilitation down in Mexico, um, which left me with uh, uh, a lot of video from, from that trip. And uh, I'm gonna probably tour the tail end of this. I'll show you some photographs of uh, my experience down in Mexico. Um, but because I have so much of it, I have over 3,000 photos and cl video clips. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with all that. But uh, I'm probably gonna do a separate little trip series uh, or a separate video series on, on the trip. So you can look for that, uh, you know, if you're interested. This particular episode, what I want to do is I'm going to show you uh, where I picked up. I do apologize for the delay, but couldn't do anything about getting sick. So um, I'm going to walk through this. Uh, we're making some headway, as you can see behind me. I've got the front skin on the uh, on the camper, and I'm doing some work on the inside is where I left off, putting the drawers in, um, getting all these things set up. Pretty soon we'll be laying fiberglass. And, uh, and I look forward to uh, showing you where we go from here. Okay, so this is uh, the table saw set up, and basically I've got it set for a quarter of an inch from the uh, guide to the blade. As you can see, uh, one of those boards covers uh, two widths. That's about five inches. I think it's about 40 inches from here to the top. Um, the nice thing about cutting these boards in half and then uh, uh, planing them down is, is that these boards end up being as long as they are. Oops, sorry. Uh, as long as they are, uh, each one of these segments is only half a board. So I end up not getting four boards, but eight out of this. Um, and so I think it's about 16 boards to the top. 
So uh, anyway, we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I'm um, getting ready to start uh, doing what's necessary to put the drawers in here. Um, as I stated in the previous video, I'll be drilling holes through the center of this cantilever support. Um, and then uh, I've got a couple of bushings that'll be going inside those holes, make it slide nice and easy. And then I have these uh, block bushings, pillow, block, pillow bushings, uh, whichever you want to call them, uh, that will be mounted on the inside. Um, basically what I'm going to do to set my hole, I measured the center of the sleeper so I know where the center of it is and then from each side I measured out eight and a quarter inches. Uh, that's a little bit off center uh, for the side drawers. It's about an inch off center I guess. Uh, but I wanted a wider support, wider stance, I guess, for the rail that's going to go here. Um, I put, the way I determined um, where the holes would be drilled is that I, I just took this uh, pillow bushing, set it right below the material that covers the sleeper. It's half inch um, plywood set that, made a rough circle inside, uh, made two or three passes to make sure I had it as centered as possible. That way when I put the screws in here, they'll grab this and then I'll grind anything that goes through the material. I'll just grind it off on top so it's nice and uh, soft. That'll hold those um, pillow block bushings in. What I'm doing is I'm taking this stainless steel um, rod and I'm setting that where the hole should be taking a mallet and I'm just basically stamping where the hole should be I'm gonna put a couple couple nice wax on it as I, I what I'll do is this slides nice and easy now um, so what I'll do is I'll actually put some lithium grease on this also just to make sure that they slide very smoothly. And then also on these, once I drill the holes or once I uh, put the screws in, I might just go ahead and put bolts in um, and tighten these up from the bottom. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it and uh, we'll see how it looks in a few minutes. Just to uh, test this out, that's my DeWalt. I am going to grab another driver, another drill. I'm just curious, so I'm going to use my old Milwaukee tool. See if it does any better. Now 
walkie tool just beat DeWalt and that heads up. Because this Milwaukee tool is old as shit. That DeWalt's almost new. There's your on the spot tool comparison. So. So if you'll notice the gap here on the sides, uh, I went ahead and I ran this um, cedar all the way to the top, or just about to the top. And what I intend to do after I put the, uh, the cardboard inserts in to block that off, I'm going to pour uh, the foam into that mold uh, very slowly and let it set up or let it expand as I pour it in and I'll fill that gap the point where it just starts to come out of this uh, of this corner right here and uh, once it's dry it's set up I can trim it off and then I could just use a rasp and knock it down so I get a nice uh, rounded curve I'm going to start shaping this corner to make it nice and round uh, it's gonna have some fillets in there that curve in and out um, and I, I kind of get it that a lot of people haven't done fiberglass. I'm no expert by a long shot. But I purposely wanted to show you, you really can't screw this up. And uh, what I mean by that is, is that I took uh, some fiberglass and uh, when I started it was a little bit cold and the stuff flashed, which means is it starts to set up or starts to harden uh, unexpectedly. So, I mean, it had set there for probably 20 minutes it hadn't flashed. Um, this particular mixture, I had thickened it and uh, I really wanted it to start to activate a little bit so I could use it as a, a, a bit of a filler. Um, but when it started to go, I thought, you know what, this, I want to make this a, an educational moment. <laughs> Stand across the front of it and then started to just lather the stuff on. Uh, the epoxy mix and I did this because I wanted to show you I knew at that point that it was it was uh, not gonna be something workable I should have just stopped and thrown it away but I thought you know what I'll make this useful for anybody who's not done fiberglass before and so I wanted to show I basically wanted to create a mess and I kind of did that from the clip I'm uh, showing you this is what a mess looks like <laughs> but not to worry because Basically, the two things that you want to be assured of, one, this is not a boat. It's not gonna be flipped upside down and sail. Uh, it's not gonna sail anywhere. Um, the whole purpose of this fiberglass is to uh, keep it waterproof, watertight. We've got fairing to do on this thing. I have a lot of smoothing and body work to do on it to make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, so what I wanted to do is, like I said, I want to give you a bad example and then I'm going to correct it. When this thing cures, I'm just going to run a grinder over it. I'm going to smooth it out the best possible. Uh, any place that I can find any air bubbles underneath it, I'm going to grind them completely out. Um, and I'm going to get it down to a nice smooth surface again.
Quiero a nadie más.